This video lesson is going to talk about a method authors sometimes use called exploding a moment. Barry Lane, a writing author that I have quoted to you before and will probably quote to you again, says, Time to a writer is like Play-Doh in the hands of a toddler. Nice simile there, right? But he's also making a point that one of the things that writing allows us to do is play around with time. We can speed up things that actually took a long time in order to get past the boring parts. And exploding a moment has to do with the opposite. We can slow down time when we get to key important events in our story. They deserve more than a quick, vague treatment. We want our readers to really experience an important part in our story, and if we're going to do that, we need to slow it down. In fact, when you've exploded a moment well, it should probably take longer to read about the action than the action would take in real life. Let me walk you through an example. This is writing taken from a middle school student. Take a peek at this. This is a moment in somebody's story. I was playing hide and seek, and I thought I would hide in the trunk of a white car. I got locked in, though, and it was scary. That's kind of an exciting thing to have happen. Not in a positive way, but I mean, there's a lot of adrenaline, there's a lot of emotion, there's a lot going on if you're locked in the trunk of a car. So, we really didn't get that out of the writing that was there. How do you go about exploding a moment? Here are the steps. Well, first off, you have to choose the, the moment, right? Pick a key moment or two in your story that you think your reader really needs to stay in and experience in order to get the full effect of your story. Often key moments are found right at the launch of the conflict when it's just beginning and again around the time of the climax of your story. So think of that plot diagram and your story arc and choose a key moment. Second step is to uh, break the moment down particularly break down the action. Think of all the things that were happening during that key moment and chunk them into smaller bits. In the case of the example I showed you about getting locked in the car, for instance, perhaps these smaller bits would be first climbing into the trunk, then pulling the trunk closed or almost closed, waiting to be found during the game of hide and seek, the seeker closing the trunk the rest of the way, and then trying to get out once you realize you're locked in. All of those are little steps along the way of, I was playing hide and seek and got locked in the trunk. Now once you've broken down the action into a few steps like that, the next thing you want to do is brainstorm details about each of the bits of action. I'm going to call it an action bit to fit it on here. What kind of details? Well, you can snapshot like you learned in the previous lesson. You can think about um, even more specifically, minutely, what action is happening. And you might also include in here characters thoughts by way of thought shots, which we talked a little bit about last week. Once you've got all these details about each bit of action, then your last step is to blend all of this into prose, which is the fancy word for sentences that are in paragraphs. So let's see what happens if we take this sentence. Again, I was playing hide and seek, and I thought I would hide in the trunk of a white car. I got locked in, though, and it was scary. What if we take that and we break it down into those little bits of action that I was describing, and we brainstorm details about each action? 
What could it become? And again, I remind you, this is a middle school writer creating this. Here's what it ended up as. I crawled into the trunk onto the hard but padded floor. I looked to see if he, meaning the seeker, was there. As soon as I saw him coming, my face pinched into a worried frown. I slowly lay down. I grabbed the steel white rim of the trunk and pulled on it until it reached the tip top of the lock. I could see a little, just enough to peek. It looked like a line of light between the trunk door and the car. Where is he? I asked myself. I could no longer see through the small opening of light that had come into the trunk. It was completely silent. No one was to be seen. I looked out, raising the trunk lid a little. He sneaked around, looked right at me, eyeball to eyeball, and slammed the trunk shut. I pushed. I kept on pushing. It was locked. I panicked. Open this trunk right now, I yelled. I kicked at the door. How can he open it, though, I asked myself. He doesn't have the keys. I started to feel sweat roll down my body. I kicked and kicked and kicked. What else could I do? All I could do was wait. I felt bruises forming, and my legs started to sting from all of my kicking. It was dark, and eventually I just lay there. I was burned out with no energy left. It was all silent. Wow. I mean, those three paragraphs were born of the first two sentences that I showed you. That's exploding a moment. Now remember, you don't want to explode everything through your story, or your story will drag on and you'd lose the impact that a couple of well-placed exploding moments can have. But I will be looking for there to be a moment or two in your story where you have really played with time in this manner and tried to capture every drop of what it was that was going on. So when you finish your notes, come see me. Bring me your notes from your snapshot exercise and your drawings and zooming in as well. I'll trade you for one of these worksheets that will walk you through exploding a moment for your own story.